I'm Hokey Joker. Bedroom. Green Lantern. And welcome to Just Us Bros Podcast. Hey, bros, welcome back to Just Us Bros Podcast. And as always, I'm Hokey Joker. I am a video game machine guru. As most of the time, I'm Green Lantern. I'm old and have can't remember crap, so I'm having to look them up. All right, guys, when you were a child and you got that N64 on Christmas, did your mind explode? What about your first PlayStation, your first Game Boy? We are all gamers at heart in some way, shape, or form. So we want to take this time to bring up three video games that really pique our interest, ones that we really enjoyed as a child and maybe even now, and tell you about them and how awesome they are for us. Oh, first, kiddo. There we go. All right, Slash Man, what three video games do you want to shout from the rooftops and say that's an awesome game? The original Mario. Um, I'm going to have to say that that's the one that broke the mold for future games, or set the mold, however you want to word that. Um, that franchise alone is one of the Probably the largest video game franchise to date. And I remember sitting around playing it for hours upon hours on my original Nintendo and getting my tail kicked. But it was so much fun, you know, and you could have two players, you know, have little Luigi run around and you jump on his head and beat the crap out of whoever your buddy is playing beside you and just have fun. Oh, well, since Flashman, you mentioned the Mario on the original Nintendo, right? Yeah, because that's that's just great stuff right there. Oh yeah, also back in our day, you actually had to switch a switch on the, behind the TV before you can play your games. I don't know nothing about that now today, do you? But anywho, <clears throat> for my top three games that just resonate with me very well, I would have to pick three different franchises because out of each of these franchises I'm going to pick, I could name three different games in each and be like those are my top ones but no particular order for my first franchise the entire just mario franchise and i mean for the n64 super mario 64 holds a special place in my heart man that game ah oh, such good stuff such good stuff so mine takes me back to my little fandom days when i was five and we were at a friend's birthday party and someone turned on the NES. nes and they played the OG Power Rangers side scroller game. But like those terrible sprites, but damn if they don't hold a special place, Mark. And you can find that video game online on a free emulator. And it is so much fun to go down. The only difference is I'm not holding the pad, I'm doing this with my fingers. So that that's just my number three. Yeah. Mine are mine's not gonna be in any particular order. I'm just gonna name the three that I like. But the first one that's top of mind, because it was probably the first game franchise that I did or played when I was younger, is the Pokemon franchise, uh, specifically on handheld console. So I started with Pokemon Blue, so back in the red and blue days. So you kids out there watching that started with black and white, there's like five generations before that, before they ran out of colors. Um, those just hold a special place in my heart to the point where I still play them almost daily. Yeah, I've probably got thousands of hours just in the original franchise. Not to mention Gold and Silver, Ruby Sapphire. Um, I don't want to get through the whole rainbow, but yeah, all the way up to Scarlet and Violet. Number two, I'm going to have to go back to the original Gold Zelda on original Nintendo. 2D, oh, you're, on, you're over top of them, walking around. The story on it was wonderful. You know, the graphics for what they were were great. If you, this, the 8 bit or 16 bit, whatever it was. And it's just that started the franchise with, you know, where we are now on the Switch and these open world games. That game was very linear. You know, the original games that we grew up with were very linear based. And the open world concept didn't come in until the 2000s, 2010s, yeah. somewhere in that ballpark. So it's very much a, gold driven game and i thoroughly thoroughly recommend that game to anybody just the original gold zelda man you got me second guessing my list now because damn i'm old well we we are the old heads but um 
honorable mention has to go to Zelda Ocarina of Time because N64 again, man, that and side note, I also love that game where I can go, I can actually go fishing in that game. So I spent like hours in there too, just fishing or just but, run around um, playing the flute. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but no, but it's damn the Zelda games did not make my list, unfortunately, but they honorable mention, like I said, uh, my second, I guess, franchise I'm going to say is the uh, Borderlands franchise. I remember our friend Billy like showing me the first commercial that came out for that game. He's like, look at this, man. It's like 80, 80 bazillion guns you can have. I'm like, whatever, dude. I don't think you can really have that. But I mean, getting into the game, you'd be like, oh, damn, there really are a bunch of combinations of guns. And oh, killing the psychos in that game, the, the lore of that game. And the first time the first one came out, Borderlands, you were like, man, this is great. So fun. Wasn't the greatest graphics, but that wasn't the point of the game. Um, they actually, if you look like look back on it, they did tell some pretty good stories. Borderlands 2 never made me hate a villain for anything more than I did Handsome Jack. Jesus. Uh, I, I, I might turn on my Xbox after this just to just to shoot him in the face again, because God, that guy. But yeah, that that entire franchise, the one, two, the pre-sequel, and then three, great. And I have high hopes for the movie coming out. I think it's still this summer. Yeah, because you're starring in the movie, aren't you? Yes, I am. I'm starring as Roland in the movie. Um, and my stunt double, who's going to actually be in most of the scenes because I actually have to work because I'm not a millionaire, is Kevin Hart. But okay. anywho, yeah, yeah. But like I said, I, I am excited for that movie, but also it might just turn into a guilty pleasure popcorn flick for me, and it might not be great, but high hopes, high hopes. I never played Borderlands other than with our friend Jerem. Um, he had this thing where he liked, liked me to come over and start a brand new story on these games that I never played. And then I play like two hours of it and then never play the game again. So it was one of those games. It was fun. The two hours that I had, but also I would have liked to play it and explore it without him telling me what to do and where to go. No, it seemed like a fun game. Same thing with Zelda. Zelda the Zelda games. Again, I never had an N64, but I played them on um, the handheld and the handheld games were fun. I guess my next one would be the Elder Scrolls franchise. I've been playing the game since Morrowind came out. I had a buddy that's no longer with us, but he got me into Morrowind, Morrowind and because he talked about it so much. And I remember one summer going over to his house and just playing it for like hours on end. And then um, when Oblivion came out on PS3, I got that like immediately. And again, played hours upon hours of that game. The DLC that came out, hours and hours of that game. I mean, for years, I played that game until 2011 when Skyrim came out. And I've got so many save files. I've got I've got Skyrim on, I think I've got it on PS3, PS4, and PS5. So many save files, so many hours uh, in it. Just the lore and everything for those games is just, you just wonder how they come up with all that stuff. Patiently waiting. We're on year 13 right now for a sequel to Skyrim for the Elder Scrolls 6. Last I saw, estimated release date was 2028. So we'll be at 17 years, but who knows? Um, but I am excited for that one to come out in those games. I still go back to and just randomly screw around, just kill villagers for no reason, just for fun. And then you also uh, at somehow get a, a Green Lantern patch in there. Odds are wonderful. I, I got that mod was only available. So the PC has the best mods for Skyrim. Um, so I see why you're a PC fan, Flashman. Mm -hmm. um, so, but yeah, there was one summer where I modded my PC and then I somehow was able to hook up my PS4 controller to my PC and play it as normal. And like I had the entire Green Lantern Corps, like all the guards were like different lanterns. And that was cool. They had some pretty badass armor. I'm going to go for my number two. It's an underrated game. I don't think you guys will know about it. Um, it was on the N64, and it's called Mystical Ninja starring Goemon. Bless you. I, what? I, was it Was it Goemon from Lupin the Third? No, no. This was like, it. it I, as much as I hate Chubby-style things, this was very much like a Chubby-style animation, but it came out, it was on the N64, and I would rent that all the time as a kid. And what you would do is like, I, I'm, I mean, the picture's on the screen right now. You would, like, have to travel around this Japanese village, and you were, you look you look like Goku, pretty much, armed with a smoking pipe that you would, like, 
defeat your villains with. And your villains were like floating dog heads, sushi rolls. It was, it was all three dimensional. And like one of the first things is you go up a mountain, Mount Fuji, and unlock the extender pole where you can like throw it out, connect it, and pull yourself. It was just the most fun time. Um, What's the name of it again? Mystical Ninja Starring Goemon. No, I, I'll I'll find myself like going back and like finding like the the playthrough. Just like I remember that, I remember that, and then like that floating dog kid that you would like hit with a smoking pipe, and it would, you know. I do remember that. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. I'm. I think I'm gonna have to lean towards the Doom franchise for like one of the first true first person shooters that you just wanted to run around and shoot every damn thing. I would spend hours on that just like twisted metal just any of the the shooter style games i remember me and my cousin in alabama we would sit around and play that game until five six o'clock in the morning and then we like "Uh uh-oh we got stuff to do in an hour and it was just that those memories are what make me think what what i think of when i think of that game you know what i mean graphics were fun you know all the blood and gore when it would splash on the screen and you know the sound effect it was just fun fun so if you haven't and you've lived under a rock check it out you know i never actually got into those games but i did watch the movie and it's it's a guilty pleasure movie for me the Um, last 20 minutes of it (laughs) yeah because carl urban definitely did his thing in that movie and i really love that scene where um like when he first becomes you know his super self like they actually shoot it in the first person yeah, game like the game so that was that was great that also reminds me i have another honorable mention for a game and i mentioned this a while ago Lolly, lollipop chainsaw that was just a fun you play as a high school cheerleader that um saves the world from a zombie apocalypse that deals with music kind of sort of but yeah when they remake that game i'm definitely playing it again because i had so much fun with it but my um number one or the last franchise that I'm going to pick that for my top three, obviously, I mean, who would have guessed it, it would have been the Batman the Arkham series franchise because man, it's so good. So good. Cause I mean, I mean, what else can I say about that? I can spend an entire day talking about the entire series. Hell just one game, let alone. Cause there's so much to do in asylum. We thought there was no more we could do when we got to city, but we were like surprised. You know, I even, I'm not even, I'm even going to say Arkham Origins, that was still a damn good game. Well, not a lot of people liked it because they were expecting the third final game, but I mean, for hey, what the, it's worth. Yeah, that one we got to ride around in the Batmobile and jump out of it and everything else, right? Or that was Arkham, that was, Arkham that was Knight. Knight. Okay, Origins. Origins was that's the, the one I Christmas. sold you way back when? Or gave yeah. you way back when? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's the one with the Deathstroke fight that was. Yeah, okay. Yeah. You know, the actual, the. The actual Deathstroke fight the franchise needed, not a freaking tank battle in Arkham Knight. But yeah, I mean, those games, so great. And especially with all the DLCs where you get to play as, well, I guess more so in Arkham Knight, where you get to be each Batman from like movie franchises and whatnot with their Batman respective deals, Batmobiles. Yeah. Oh my goodness, that's so great. The DLC so where you could be 92. Yes. Yes. Actually, is 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 the animated series Batmobile unlockable in that game or not yet? Yes. Oh my I think god. So. I think so. <laughs> I know what I'm doing. I know I've seen the mods for the PC. Yeah. Oh my goodness. I know what I'm doing later tonight too. We. I, I had a tough one on this one because we mentioned it on the other video. There's the Dragon Ball Z franchise with a lot of good fighting games. I really like fighting games. Um, there's that franchise that I'm going to give an honorable mention. There's the Mortal Kombat franchise again that I'm going to give an honorable mention. Because I really like those games. I'm playing MK1 right now. And it's pretty awesome. Um, But I had to... I almost forgot about this one. But then I was like, anytime I go anywhere that there's an arcade or that I think is going to have it, I've got to play it. (laughs) It's Guitar Hero. (laughs) Um, And and I've got it at home. Watching Gio play that when he's buzzed. Nothing greater in the world than that. Nothing greater. Remember when it was set up at Walmart? Oh, yeah. The old set up at Walmart. I beat the game in Walmart. Um, The original Guitar Hero 1, I beat that game in Walmart. But, I mean, anytime I'm out somewhere and I will pay $20 for an hour in an arcade just to play Guitar Hero. Music's always been a part of my life. Playing the songs that 
I love it. And honestly, the franchise introduced artists and songs that I'd never heard of um, that now are like great, like and in rock band too. So the rock band guitar here, the, the whole the whole franchise of music playing games. Oh, um, DJ Hero. DJ Hero um, was not oh, the best. My goodness, but rock band. Oh. Rock band was good. I mean, what was that one that we used to play all the time? Hojo, uh, Green Grass, and High Tides. Yeah, by the Outlaws. Yeah, never heard of them before, but I love that song. I can sing that song pretty easily too. I remember all the lyrics. Oh my god! Yep. Um, and Rush, the games introduced Rush to me. Like I'm a huge Rush fan now, but before those games, never played them or never never heard of Rush. So yeah, those games. I've got it set up in my basement right now. I still play it like once a week. Or not sober up too. It's fine too. Yeah. And I'd love to see. A, I'd love to see. Hate to say this because they're going to come out with a new guitar that's only playable on the new system. And it's going to cost a lot of money, but I'd love to see that game make a comeback. Were you awesome. ever able to beat Dragon Force? Oh, yeah. God, yeah, he did. Awesome. Yeah. Expert, game, too, right? That song kicked my ass. Couldn't beat it now. <laughs> I, I couldn't beat it now if I tried, but I played it on Expert enough to know exactly when to use my um, star power. And yeah. But yeah, this mentioning Guitar Hero and then Hojo said something about DJ Hero, which uh, no one else should mention again. That, hey, made me we, think, that made me remember this one. I guess you can say it's a franchise, too, that we completely forgot about. The first two games, great. Nothing else happened after that because I'm not going to acknowledge it. But Def Jam Vendetta, man, damn, how did I forget those games? I just hey, my, mama's, my mama's fight for New York. Yeah. Fuck Fat Joe. Exactly. You know something funny? Never played them. Well, I remember but the DJ so, Hero thing. Me and GL bought it at a Toys R Us when they were like discounted to what twenty bucks. It was like twenty bucks for the top for two turntables. The game. I thought They're it was like, like yeah, we just gotta one, get rid of this. It was like buy one get one free too for twenty bucks. It was like that yeah. discounted. And I, I I played it that weekend that we got it, and it's been boxed up ever since. All right, um, my last one, which I think is a um, is a gem that. I downloaded it and I played it on the PS3. It got taken off the store for legal reasons and then got brought back on the PS4 as a 8-bit side scroller, Scott Pilgrim versus the World. That game is awesome. The 8-bit music soundtrack playing through the 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 manga version. It I loved that game. It took me back to the old arcade classics of just the side scroller beat 'em up. You can have up to 4 people join you secret characters and i just really enjoyed that I josh know, you look like you played it game. before what did you think of it josh i was drunk last time i played it and the, probably the one time i played it so it was really fun then it was so cheesy it was fun like that's the only way i can put it. i'm not saying it made me who i am i'm just saying I, that was a great game so the game that i absolutely love but what i think <laughs> yeah I, I think we also need to throw an honorable mention uh gl mentioned this to our friend jerem and that is the halo franchise Grand Theft Auto. Oh no, that too. That's yeah. too. Grand Theft Auto was on my list too. We we only like he's the only one who had it. One is was the Xbox 360 that he had, and he would we would go over and play along with like Halo and whatnot. But pretty much we would turn on the invincibility sheet, Super Punch, hand GL the controller, and say, "I wonder if I can make that gas tank blow up." And then Jeremy would say, "I don't know, maybe." And then we would make it blow up somehow, or you know, just. Those hours of wasting his save files of wasting his saved money was well worth it with a you know invulnerable cheat code and then you know falling off a thirty story building and just walking out with a seven hundred and fifty hospital bill. It's great. GTA three infinite ammo glitch with RPGs will live in infamy. So many days, so many days of just getting rage out of killing people on that game. All right, bros, what are your top three video games from your childhood? Who doesn't have to be your childhood? It can be, I don't know, even two weeks ago. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and put it down in the comments. But as always, I'm Hokey Joker. I'm Vengeance. Green Lantern. Flashman. And as always, guys, keep on smashing those buttons. Cheers. <laughs>